So hello again. Uh, thank you for waiting. Uh, so I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Omar Kobeiter, and I'm the Digital Marketing Manager at Imagine Optic. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Discover UDM, the unique deformable mirror for microscopy, ophthalmology, and laser beam shaping. Uh, we will have an exciting program today. In the next few minutes, we'll delve into the latest innovation of optical technology. Here's a quick overview of uh, what to expect. Uh, in this webinar, uh, I'm going to start by introducing the speakers, Fabrice Arms, our scientific coordinator, Audrey Josaitis, sales and application specialist, and myself. Uh, following is the program of the webinar. We're going to do a short company presentation, and then we're going to go into presenting UDM, its applications, and the technology. And the third part will be a hands-on part where we will introduce the AO software. Uh, and uh, we start by doing the calibration of the mirror with the wavefront sensor, explaining closed loop and open loop operations and beam shaping and linearity, linearity functions of the mirror. And we leave a couple of minutes, 15 minutes around for Q&A session. I will give the hand to my colleague, Fabrice. At any time, you can download the, the hands out presented, which are the data sheet of the mirror and the data sheet of the AO system. Okay, thank you, uh, Omar, for the introduction. So, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining uh, us for this webinar. So, um, the, briefly here, uh, I will start with just uh, an overview of, of, uh, of the company, uh, Imagine Optic, which is uh, now uh, nearly a 30 years old uh, company that mostly deals with uh, adaptive optics. So in particular with uh, wavefront sensors, mainly based on the Shackartman technology, but also uh, deals with the deformable mirror for various applications. And we'll dig into that during the presentations. And also more recently, um, innovation in terms of metrology systems for various uh, application fields, uh, and also adaptive optics solutions for microscopy, uh, laser beam shaping, and astronomy. All right, so um, now a couple of words about um, new imaging. Uh, which is uh, a very recent uh, microscopy division of Imagine Optic that focuses on the application of adaptive optics into a microscopy. And the vision of uh, this division is through the use of adaptive optics to improve the visualization of biostructures and functions, and also to facilitate research in various uh, biology fields. Uh, here, the idea of the, of the division will be to provide uh, latest innovation in terms of deformable mirrors, wavefront sensors, and adaptive optics systems and solutions for uh, research and uh, industry. Um, it has to be noted for that, uh, that for the ophthalmology part, uh, all uh, these uh, devices can be uh, available through our uh, sister company, Imaginize. All right, so let's go into uh, now the, the webinar and I will start for the first part with a, a couple of, of reminder and explanations about uh, the technology behind uh, this new deformable mirror and uh, the context uh, in terms of adaptive optics. All right, so uh, as said uh, with the titles of the, of, of, the, of the webinar, here the idea is to focus on particular fields of application of uh, adaptive optics, which are uh, mainly uh, bioimaging, microscopy in one side, ophthalmology in the other side, but also as said uh, in the title, uh, it's possible using adaptive optics to shape uh, beams and in particular laser beams. All right, so just a couple of very brief reminders uh, about uh, aberrations and adaptive optics to give you the context of the development that was made uh, for this new uh, deformable mirror. Uh, so first of all, you, you all know that in fluorescent microscopy, there are uh, three main uh, reasons why uh, uh, images go um, well or distorted, uh, in particular when we go in-depth. Uh, so uh, these phenomena are uh, scattering, absorption, and aberrations. 
And here, adaptive optics is dealing with this third uh, phenomenon, which is responsible in depth for a lot of loss in terms of fluorescent signal, but also in terms of optical resolution, as illustrated here with these images of cells that go in more and more in depth. And it's, let's say, about the same in ophthalmology, where, as you probably all know, the eye is not uh, really not an ideal and perfect optical system. Uh, it has a lot of optical aberration, in particular coming from the anterior segment, uh, the cornea and the crystalline lens, that really limit uh, the, the image quality uh, when, uh, when any instrument tries to image the retina in terms of resolution in particular. So here, adaptive optics has been uh, has shown uh, during the last decade and, and more that uh, is uh, suitable to correct for this optical aberration both in microscopy and in ophthalmology. And here is a very nice example uh, given by our sister company uh, Imaginize that shows that with the use of adaptive optics, it's possible to retrieve cellular resolution of the retina and restore uh, the vision of individual cones uh, and rods and photoreceptors in the retina. All right, so now um, let's go into um, some basics just to give the context of adaptive optics correction methods. So basically here with the example of microscopy, there are two main ways to correct optical aberration, two main methods that um, differ based on how the wavefront, so the aberrations are uh, measured or, or estimated, I'd say. First of all, there's a direct wavefront sensing method that makes use of both a wavefront sensor, that's usually a Schacht-Hartmann wavefront sensor, which is shown here, and a wavefront modulator, that's usually a deformable mirror here. And so the, the wavefront center is measuring directly the, 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 the aberrations and transform this measurement into a set of comments to the uh, a wavefront modulator here. And all this is um, um, uh, is running into uh, in, in terms of a feedback loop, a continuous feedback loop, a closed loop uh, system. So this method is particularly effective in terms of accuracy because uh, wavefront uh, sensors are, are really accurate up to lambda over uh, 100 uh, typically. And it's pretty fast because this is a direct wavefront uh, measurement uh, method and feedback operation is, is, uh, is, is really effective in terms of speed. However, uh, this method requires that some light is used for wavefront sensing so that it can be considered at potentially photon expensive. And also, uh, it is required to integrate into a system both a wavefront modulator but also a wavefront sensor so that it can be considered as a complex implementation. And since it's usually based on Schacht-Hartmann, also a requirement is that you need to have a guide star that generates a single wavefront uh, to be measured. So the alternative to that is another method which is called indirect wavefront sensing, or usually called sensorless adaptive optics, which doesn't make any more use of a wavefront sensor, but only uh, makes use of a wavefront modulator, so a deformable mirror, for example. And here, the wavefront is indirectly, uh, um, I would say, not measured, but, uh, but uh, uh, I mean, uh, evaluated with the use of a set of images from the imaging camera, for example, and a merit factor, so a quality factor on this image. So there's an iterative process that typically requires tens of images to evaluate uh, the perfect shape to be applied to the wavefront modulator to get at the end the best image possible. So it, this method has a, a set of advantages. It is more easy to implement because you only need to position the wavefront modulator on the path and usually it's less uh, affected by uh, scattering in particular in depth so that it can be in principle uh, operated deeper than for the direct wave sensing method. However, since it requires a set of images, um, it's far slower than the direct wavefront sensing approach, so that it's usually limited to a fixed samples, not moving samples. For example, it's not applicable uh, 
uh, in ophthalmology and usually not compatible with functional imaging uh, in microscopy. All right. So um, now I will give a couple of, of details about both methods and a couple of examples focused on microscopy. So first of all, for the closed loop, closed loop operation, um, it is usually recommended to use such approach when a fast update of aberration correction is required. So it means then when aberrations are changing over time. For example, in ophthalmology, but also for example, uh, in live imaging of, of animal models, for example. Um, also, it is recommended to use this approach when you don't want to induce photo bleaching due to the adaptive optics process itself and also when fast 3D imaging is required and when this, the corresponding aberration are changing over the, three, uh, the third dimension. Also, uh, this approach is recognized as the highest, uh, 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 the, as highly accurate, uh, higher, uh, highly accurate, more accurate than the indirect uh, wavefront sensing approach. But for, for the implementation of this method, What's required in terms of hardware is a high precision wavefront sensor, because uh, here what's driving the, uh, the uh, efficacy uh, of this is the wavefront sensor, the wavefront sensing uh, accuracy. Uh, the, wave, the phase modulator in this case is only correcting what is measured by the wavefront sensor. But uh, um, high level of linearity and speed of the wavefront modulator are required in order to optimize uh, the speed of the convergence of the closed loop, and I'll come back into that a little bit later. In this case, here, the wavefront sensor is located after the wavefront modulator because it has to see the impact of the shape of the wavefront modulator on the measured wavefront. Now I will give you a couple of examples uh, of what is possible to, to be done with the right set of wavefront sensor and wavefront modulator on uh, on a couple of microscopy modalities. So here are results on both two photon and light sheet microscopy that were obtained uh, using our devices in collaboration uh, uh, with uh, academic partners. So here you can see on the left um, two movies showing uh, two photon imaging from the top to the bottom of, uh, of a fixed mouse brain uh, slice here that shows that uh, adaptive optics strongly enhances both signal and resolution, in particular on very small structures like uh, here axons. Uh, all right, so uh, here this is a maximum intensity projection of the whole stack over 300 micron. And here on the right is an example of ima 3D imaging of um, uh, um, uh, neurons uh, of a zebrafish brain in depths uh, between 150 and 300 micron that shows that with adaptive optics it's possible to significantly increase uh, the intensity of signal but also the resolution with the idea at the end to enable better quantification for example here better 3D cell segmentation for uh, several uh, biological studies. All right so now a couple of words about uh, the alternative sensorless uh, adaptive optics method, which is usually recommended to be used for samples uh, for which aberration do not vary significantly over time, and for which there's no particular issue about photo bleaching in the case of long-term experiments, and, and also for uh, being able to implement lower complexity setups. In this case, in terms of hardware, what's required is mainly a high linearity uh, um, wavefront modulator like a deformable mirror, because since there's no direct measurement of the wavefront, it's necessary that any shape that asks to be done to the wavefront modulator is perfectly done because there's no feedback mechanism here to correct for any uh, non-linearity or bias from the wavefront modulator. Also, uh, since, for example, for certain modalities like single molecule localization microscopy, um, the imaging process might take a long time, it's necessary that there's a high temporal stability of the wavefront that's created by such uh, wavefront modulators. 
All right. So now, again, just briefly, a couple of examples uh, also done uh, with uh, with uh, collaboration collaborators um, using our uh, set of adaptive optics components. So here on the left, you see a movie showing. Um, the typical point threat function that can be acquired through single molecule localization microscope. So without adaptive optics, you see a strongly um, distorted point threat function. And with adaptive optics, it's, it's possible to see that uh, the, the circular shape of a, of a good PSF is retrieved here, which, as you can imagine, strongly uh, increases the localization precision. And here on the right, uh, an example of adaptive optics that, that has been integrated into the detection path, path of a lattice light sheet microscope uh, and you see here the effect of the correction of aberration in depths here on brain organoids without adaptive optics and with adaptive optics on the bottom that show increase in terms of signal but also in terms of resolution in particular for small structures like here this uh, dendritic spines all right so now, now let's move to a wavefront modulation. So just a brief word on, um, well, it's not exhaustive here for sure, but uh, in a brief word about existing uh, phase modulation technologies. So basically here uh, we mentioned uh, the main four ones that are used for multiple and diverse uh, application fields. So basically spatial light modulators based on liquid crystals uh, that are uh, uh, pretty interesting because uh, there are a lot of pixels. You can generate really high order uh, wavefront modes. You can generate phase jumps. But usually, uh, most of these devices are pretty slow and they have a lot of constraints in terms of polarization. Uh, and, and the shape that's generated here can be wavelength dependent. Okay, now um, MEMS deformable mirrors um, that are interesting in terms of their speed. Uh, they can go. Uh, up to more than kilohertz. So for application uh, requiring fast wavefront changes, it's very interesting, for example, for astronomy. Um, also, um, uh, these uh, type of deformable mirrors have a lot of pixel, so they can generate very high mode. However, due to the technology, the amplitude of the wavefront that they can generate is usually uh, pretty small. And for segmented mirrors, uh, usually you have residual the diffraction effect that you need to deal with. Okay, I will jump uh, straight away to, to the last one, the transmissive phase modulator that are more recent and usually called uh, now called uh, adaptive lenses that are really interesting because, uh, I mean, it's, it's very easy to integrate that directly on the optical path uh, without any reflection from a mirror, so it's possible to save space. Uh, so that integration is more simple than for the other ones. Um, but still, it, it's, it's being developed and being improved, but still at the moment there are a couple of um, uh, limitations, such as the limited level of transmission uh, and chromatism due to the type of material that's used in such uh, devices. And also currently the number of actuators and strokes that's possible to generate. Uh, and also, we have to consider that even if these devices are set to be, uh, for example, uh, easily placed just after uh, a microscope objective, for example, for sure, uh, pupil conjugation will not be perfect because it cannot be integrated at the exact pupil plane. And the last one is uh, the family of deformable mirror. And here we focus on electromagnetic deformable mirrors. And I will go into the details right now before the hands-on part. All right. So here, as said in the beginning, we focus on use of adaptive optics and deformable mirrors wavefront modulators for application in life sciences, microscopy, ophthalmology. And there are a key requirements for this type of use as compared to other use of adaptive optics, like, for example, astronomy that has its own set of requirements in terms of speed and that correspond to the characteristics of the turbulences of the, of the atmosphere. But here it's not the same as uh, also briefly said before. Here, what needs to be done to correct aberration in, let's say, biological media is, um, let's say, a minimum number of actuators, like minim, uh, a minimal level of spatial capability. Here, the idea is we need to correct complex 
high order uh, sample induced aberrations, third order Zernike uh, coefficient, and even more. Also, there's uh, a lim uh, um, uh, sorry, a minimum uh, amplitude of, of deformation of uh, the wavefront modulator that's required. And in this case, you can consider the case of ophthalmology because aberration the, from the eye is, is, is pretty large in some cases. Uh, so several tens of microns are required, typically. Also, as already introduced in the previous slides, there's a requirement for really high linearity because this is the key driver of the speed of the convergence of a closed loop, but also this is a key driver of the accuracy of a sensorless operation. And this is typically one of the key parameters that the new deformable mirror we introduce uh, is uh, optimized for. Also, for sure, active flat needs to be pretty good because you need to have at least diffraction limits uh, after correction. As mentioned before, uh, uh, several cases require that um, any shape can be kept with a very good level of accuracy uh, and stability over time uh, at the level of diffraction limit over several hours. And also now with, um, let's say, the spread of adaptive optic technology in multiple macroscopy or ophthalmology systems, there's a need to uh, improve integration as compared to existing devices uh, in order to be able to define and develop a complete system that initially integrate the adaptive optics capability. So further uh, increase the integration of electronics and miniaturization of the whole thing. And still these type of technologies that were mentioned before are still uh, pretty expensive. So there's a need to a little bit improve the price performance ratio. Okay, so the idea of the whole development that we're showing the results uh, today and you will see during the hands-on is to improve, well, to, to, to answer to these requirements that are uh, at the moment still not fully covered uh, with the devices that are existing on the market. Okay, so now let's go a little bit into the technology. So uh, the MUDM deformable we now represent today is based on electromagnetic actuation. So basically, the mirror is made of a reflective thin membrane, flexible membrane, that's typically silver coated to be broadband. Uh, on this membrane are uh, a set of positioned a set of magnets, micromagnets, under the, the reflective parts. And in front of these magnets, a set of corresponding coils. So uh, the idea is to send a, a current, typically, in the coils so that uh, the membrane will be locally uh, pushed or pulled and the shape of the membrane will be, uh, will be uh, changed accordingly. So the nice benefits of this particular electromagnetic technology is that it can provide very large amplitude of deformation of the, of the wavefront and typically uh, uh, several tenths of micron uh, peak to valley. It's intrinsically due to the physical uh, um, principle of electromagnetic actuation, intrinsically very linear, and we'll see that afterwards. Also, it can generate um, wavefront with a very high accuracy because it makes use of a continuous membrane. It provides a very low value of active flat and we'll see that on, during the hands-on and also intrinsically due to the physical principle uh, of electromagnetic actuation, it has vit virtually no hysteresis. But still, uh, considering existing devices that are available on the market, there are some current limitations. For some of these devices, they are not that stable uh, in terms of uh, temporal behavior. In some implementation, you can find some creep uh, of the wavefronts. Also, most of these devices uh, um, have bulky electronics and, and, and stiff cables uh, that can be a constraint in terms of integration and also are pretty expensive. So the development we show uh, today addresses this limitation while keeping the benefits of the electromagnetic uh, technology. All right, so here are uh, basically the, the, the specification of the developed mirror. So I will uh, not go into all the details because you can access, uh, uh, for sure, uh, you can access anytime um, the data sheet of, of the mirror on our website and, and through the, the webinar. 
Uh, I will just focus on here the linearity that is close to be perfect and will demonstrate that during the hands-on. And also I will focus on these 50 micron capabilities uh, with just a couple of actuators it's possible to generate 50 micron uh, of, of uh, optical uh, um, uh, deformation. All this is done through a 15 millimeter diameter pupil. And in terms of speed, uh, the typical resonant frequency of the mirror is around 300 hertz. All this is, as you can see, packaged into a single piece device that is driven through a USB cable. Okay, so now I will just uh, do a brief focus on the spatial uh, uh, capabilities of the mirror and in particular on the design and the, on the layout of these actuators here that were optimized to provide the best possible density over a circular pupil. Most of the existing devices are based on the spatial ar arrangement of actuators over a grid like this and it's definitely not uh, the best adapted uh, layout to generate perfectly Zernike coefficients based on a circle of pupil. So here, um, the MUDM deformable mirror has 91 actuators over a 15 millimeter diameter pupil, which roughly correspond to more than 100 uh, actuators that would be needed if the layout was based on a circle, uh, on a, sorry, on a square grid. Um, and again, here, this is, these are just typical values that are possible to generate uh, on the first uh, Zernike polynomials, which are uh, uh, far, uh, far more than what's uh, required for most of the application microscopy and that are required for uh, the correction aberration in ophthalmology. All right, so now the typical curve that were observed in terms of linearity and their impact on the closed loop conversions. So, here you can see on this curve uh, the, uh, the achieved versus uh, expected uh, movement of, uh, of, the deform of the membrane of the deformable mirror with a linearity value close to 100%. And again, uh, linearity, as said before, is really critical for any adaptive optic operation, either closed loop or uh, open loop. So this is, uh, this is a... a, a uh, a parameter of the deformable mirror, a specification of the deformable mirror on which we put a, a lot of effort to obtain such uh, values with nearly undetectable uh, hysteresis. And we'll show that on the hands-on, but starting from a significant amount of aberration with only one iteration of a closed loop, it's possible to correct nearly all uh, the aberrations that are measured due to this very uh, high value of linearity. So it means that speed of the conversion to the, to the final uh, optimal solution is, is really high in this case. All right, so here this is just uh, an example showing here in open loop operation the, the benefit of having a very good linearity. And we'll repeat this experiment during the hands-on, but basically if you apply here, for example, one micron peak to value of focus, so here on, on, on this circle or pupil of the mirror, and you, you ask the mirror to actually achieve uh, this, uh, this value of one micron PV, here this is what you get as the residual wavefront, so 13 uh, nanometer root mean square, that shows that the mirror perfectly, close to perfectly, achieves the desired shape with a very limited amount of residual aberration, at least above the diffraction limit. And this was done for uh, the main first uh, aberrations, uh, the third order aberrations uh, that you can mostly see in microscopy and ophthalmology. All right, so here this is just illustrative in terms of integration. You can see uh, a photo of the inside here that shows uh, that all the electronics is embedded. So here are the boards that drive uh, the coils of the deformable mirror. And in terms of um, 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 how to drive physically, here you can see that there's a trigger in, trigger out a connector, uh, a USB connector that drives the whole thing, and just a standard five volt power supply. So the advantage here is that you have I said no cables, no fans, uh, no noise, and it's really ideal to do a good uh, integration in terms of a module or even a system here. 
And here, an example of what's possible to achieve in terms of temporal stability. So here, the idea was to generate a point fact function. In this case, there's a small amount of astigmatism. So we can see here with, uh, with the focus, uh, the, the two lines of astigmatism. And here, we uh, monitored the shape of this point fact function over a long period of time. So over hours and even after one and two days, that shows that uh, the waveform generated by the mirror is uh, is really stable. We see some very small change in, uh, changes visually here in the point fact function after even two days. All right, so for sure, uh, this type of uh, device uh, um, we provide uh, with uh, the whole set of software solution to drive it and to integrate it into a full adaptive optics solution. So uh, Audrius will just afterward demonstrate that. So either, uh, let's say, a small piece of software only to play with the mirror, but also um, a complete uh, package in terms of adaptive optics uh, software, either here with a graphic uh, user interface, but also the whole set of necessary SDK uh, in C, C++, uh, Python, for example, uh, that's, that can be necessary uh, for uh, designing your own uh, piece of software. All right, so um, I think I'm finished with uh, this uh, introduction that gives you the whole context, a couple of details about the technology. So now we we, we can move forward to the hands-on part. So this is typically the bench uh, that you will see just afterwards. And that's based on, um, let's say, some kind of an, an adaptive optics kit, which we call the AO kit uh, Bio here. That's mainly made of a wavefront sensor that you can see here on the bench, deformable mirror, so here the MUDM represent today, and the, the, the software to control all that. Um, for rough technology application, uh, again, uh, um, it's possible to, to, to access uh, all these devices through our uh, sister company, uh, Imaginize. So I think now I will uh, let the, uh, give the word to, to my colleague Aris to, to do the hands-on part. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fabrice. Uh, uh, let's start the hands-on part, and uh, I will start maybe by introducing uh, an optical bench that we have here. We will use for the demonstration. Um, so uh, we don't have the microscope uh, today, but uh, we will use this uh, bench, which will be able to show all the capabilities of the deformable mirror. So as you can see, we have mounted deformable mirror, the MUDM here. Uh, connected just with USB 3 device and a small power supply. Uh, basically, all electronics are here. There is no additional boxes or, or some bulky devices uh, additional to that. Uh, we also have the wavefront sensor and uh, uh, the light source uh, slowly diverging, uh, and uh, we collimate, co collimate uh, the beam on the deformable mirror, and uh, which and reflected light goes to the the carton wavefront sensor, and both wavefront sensor and the deformable mirror are conjugated to each other, so we can act on the face in a concerted way. Uh, and there is one more additional optical pathway for uh, observing the point spread function. So we have a, a microscope objective here, uh, which focuses the light, for, forms an image plane on the additional camera, so we can see the point spread function. So. I can start sharing my screen. Thank you. Okay, so I will start your demonstration with the uh, uh, software, which uh, basically we deliver with every mirror. Uh, it's a standalone software, which does not require any wavefront sensor. To be operated, uh, and uh, we first choose the correct mirror to, to connect, and uh, basically we ask to connect it. And uh, the software allows you to apply uh, flat wavefront on, on the on the mirror, uh, zero zero actuator, zero wavefront on every actuator, and operate in Zernike mode. So if we apply flat, you see that the values on actuators are changing. And uh, basically, it, it applies the flat, flat shape. 
uh, and th this is useful for aligning the first step of aligning the setup. Uh, the software also allows you to apply simple Zernica modes to, to required to the amplitude the amplitudes that you uh, prefer. So you can uh, manually manually correct uh, aberrations which you can find in the in the optical setup. Uh, software also also shows you the dynamic range which is used by the mirror. So in this case, we applied a significant amplitude already, and it's about 34% of the dynamic range. And it shows also the temperature, intrinsic temperature of the all electronics and uh, the membrane temperature. Um, at, at any point, you can also again apply zero. You can apply flat, and uh, basically, advantage of the software that uh, you can start using the mirror directly out of the box. Just immediately after receiving the mirror, you can start using the using it. So we will disconnect uh, this one, and uh, we'll show also that the rest of the uh, presentation will be using the WaveTune adaptive optics software. This is software developed by Imagine Optic and uh, it's much more sophisticated uh, piece of software uh, dedicated to control both the formable mirror and the wavefront sensor and uh, in a way other, other devices like a focal plane camera. So in the settings we can choose uh, sensor to, to, to connect. In this case, it's a house of a first wavefront sensor, uh, MUDAM uh, number six, and the focal spot camera, which we will be using for monitoring the point spread function. The, uh, well, the, the WaveTune software has a lot of, a lot of functionalities, uh, which uh, I will not be able to show you in this demo, but we will try to use some specific things we need for this demonstration so we can basically there's a big uh, di diagnostic panel for measuring the wavefront so if we hit play we can uh, see the raw image of the check Hartman wavefront sensor which is used then to calculate the the wavefront here we can also see the saturation on the wavefront sensor so the, the value which is important not to uh, saturate I mean, for, for the accuracy of measurements. Uh, then this image is used for calculate, calculating uh, the wavefront. In this case, you can see that we like a two, two specific values, very important characteristics are peak to valley and the root mean square of the residual, well, the shape, let's say. Uh, in this case, it's uh, quite deformed the wavefront, uh, having uh, 0.4 microns of uh, uh, RMS. Uh, it's because the mirror, which is now, I will show the layout, uh, the shape on the mirror is uh, so-called zero, zero on all actuators, which is far from ideal for this kind of setup, for this optical setup. Um, we also, well, in this uh, Shakartman sensor panel, you can also monitor the intensity of the wavefront. And... Uh, also calculate the point spread function uh, using the raw data from the Shakartman's reference sensor. Um, we, yeah, since I mentioned that we also have the diagnostic uh, camera for the point spread function, uh, you can see that on the on the point spread function we are measuring also quite distorted wavefront. Uh, we can compare uh, the two. Maybe we need to oriented slightly differently so it, it starts to coincide the, the, the two the, the two images so you can see that uh, the measured uh, point spread function and uh, calculated point spread function from the uh, wavefront sensor do coincide to even smallest details uh, uh, it just shows that uh, a good conjugation i guess of these two devices uh, one important uh, parameter which we also calculate here is a strel ratio so strel ratio of 0 0.5 0, 0 0.5 uh, is, is really very low value uh, which is clearly i mean this point spread function is far from ideal um so before applying the any 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 
let's say, well-controlled uh, uh, shapes on the deformable mirror, the mirror has to be calibrated. And we do this by making an interaction matrix. So I will start this procedure. Uh, as you can see during this procedure, uh, the point spread function, uh, sorry, the uh, every actuator is moved uh, in pushed and pull uh, value and the corresponding wavefront is measured and uh, all this data is collected, uh, which allows them later to, um, to form any wavefront uh, that we want to the high accuracy. Uh, this process uh, can take some time, but it's very important uh, process to do. Um, basically, this uh, the, this procedure we highly recommend to do using the Shakarpman wavefront sensor because um, this way you really with the, with the Hazo sensor you you are capable to measure the wavefront to very high accuracy, and uh, when uh, if if you want to start using uh, a high accuracy deformable mirror, you really need to also to measure the wavefront to to very high precision. Um, so in order to achieve the best performance, it's important to have both devices with very high specific specs. Let's say. So Hazel sensors uh, they really allow allow you to converge them also converge the closed loop uh, uh, very fast. So we finalized the interaction matrix, uh, and uh, now we can we can start to do the closed loop. Uh, th there are some parameters you can choose for making the closed loop, uh, such as uh, how many modes to use. For example, uh, the more modes you use, uh, clearly the better value of closed loop you can reach. But then also, well, with the limit, probably it's 91 for, for the 91 actuator, so probably 90, I don't know what is the max, uh, but sort of a little bit lower is, is a good, uh, good, uh, good value, uh, compromise value to use. Um, we will run it the loop in continuous mode with a fixed correction gain of uh, 0.5. So it will be slowly converging uh, closed loop uh, operation. Let's say. So every time, uh, with every, every iteration, uh, only half of the result will be applied on the phase modulator. Just to show you better how, how the process is uh, working. So we will hit play. And uh, so now it's not converging yet, but uh, when I hit on the on button, it will start, start converging. And we eventually reach uh, the value of uh, uh, 10, 9, 10 nanometers RMS. And if, if I hit play on the point spread function, we can see that we also reach a very good result here. If we uh, look at the PSF value here, we are reaching strill ratio of uh, 0 0.99. So it's, it's almost almost perfect. It is perfect. Uh, the, um, if we look closer into measured uh, PSF, Mm -hmm. Try to zoom on it. Uh, the the focus is not uh, not the best uh, because it's difficult to 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 attach to, to reach uh, physically the focus uh, precisely. So we can use the beam shaper mode of the of the software where we will apply a small shape of focus uh, to find the best uh, the best focusing value here. So I asked, I asked it to apply continuously, and we will see how the, the, the value of saturation should change uh, with the small iterations. So here it's going the wrong way. Okay. Yeah, really good. Around here. Right. <laughs> So this is close to the focus. Um, we also can apply small amount of astigmatism in order to see whether this is uh, well focused or not. So uh, at the uh, symmetrical cross value, you, you can see that you, you see the astigmatism. Yeah, and you can see that the reconstructed point spread function is uh, 
is also is um, so uh, the uh, we can try to apply uh, larger uh, larger shapes. Uh, uh, I will maybe just tell you. And uh, we will try to apply larger shape and then to see uh, basically to, to, to try to visualize the linearity. Uh, I will ask to apply 500, 500 nanometers RMS of astigmatism. Uh, it did apply 500 nanometers RMS of astigmatism. And uh, we measured. Do we have this? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, this one. Uh, we measure a very close value of 0 0.48, uh, for 480 nanometers, 485. So it's it's really very close to this uh, proposed value. Um, the, uh, yeah, maybe you can show another way, another uh, illustration of uh, how good linearity is by manually applying steps of a closed loop. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the basically before I was asking to do uh, converge the closed loop uh, uh, continuously, so it, it did uh, so many steps uh, and uh, it, it was running uh, continuously. But we can ask uh, the program to do finite, like one iteration at a time, and uh, I, I will ask also to to use a larger game. So uh, with game one. Uh, we will apply correction uh, immediately or all, all what we measure. And uh, if we hit play, uh, I did zero all the uh, values on the actuators. So we again having a quite bad wavefront. And by hitting uh, one time on the closed loop, uh, the program does one iteration and we go down to 0.14 nanometers to, to 14 nanometers. Yeah. And then with one more iteration, we are down to 10 nanometers, which was the, the best value that, that, that we had there. Yeah, and if you, if you click uh, even on further if you iteration, click further, it was not getting that, that much, which yeah. means that in two iterations already, you reach uh, the optimal uh, shape. Yeah. And the first iteration already uh, enables to reach 98% of the expected correction due to the high linearity of, uh, of, uh, of the set. Uh, so for the beam shaping, uh, well, we we sort of showed the the, the astigmatism that that I showed you before. Uh, this was uh, probably a good uh, example for um, applications for single molecule imaging, for example. That uh, we can slowly change the focus. Can see the the symmetry of astigmatism that can which is reached uh, using this equilibrium. Okay. Well, Thank you. I think we covered most of the capabilities of the mirror. So now, um, probably uh, this webinar is open for any question you might have uh, on the chat. Uh, section.